Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the House of Karma. I'm your host, Carmen Serrano, also known as I'm Your Karma. And I'm here with Miss Royal Crown herself for the past, like, what, three years? Three years. Three years, Miss Coquito herself, and amongst so many other things that you have going on. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I would like to ask you about the Crown Royal stuff first. So okay, the you've royal court. been queen. Right. I've been queen from 2017 to the present, representing mi cultura, my heritage, for the Bronx Puerto Rican Parade. Hey. Um, how, how was that experience? It's an amazing experience. When I started going to um, become a contestant, you know, and it's embarrassing to say that I didn't even know the, the song to La Isla de Puerto Rico. The, like the Borinquena. national anthem? Yes, La Borinquena. I And I sing that now every day, every day. And it's an honor to be a queen or, you know, I see these little girls, princesses and the prince, because you get to represent your culture. Absolutely. And you learn a lot. My granddaughter, she's still queen and she learned a lot. And it also shows you how to carry yourself as a young lady. And they, you know, you see these young ladies before and after, and you can't believe it the way they are. That's amazing. Now, what is the process? Like, how do you go about um, becoming a princess or a queen or a king for sure. those that are? You go to the Bronx Puerto Rican um, parade um, what, uh, website, and they have an application, and you fill it out if you want to become one of the contestants for the Bronx Puerto Rican parade. I'm 60 years old, so I'm in the category of the women's. So. By me telling you you're my age, it's letting you know it's never too late. Too late for you to become a queen, a princess. That's awesome. You, yes, yes. They have um, men. And right now we're taking um, father and son, granddaughter, grandmother, you know, to join. So you guys already know. If you guys are interested in the royal crown. In, in becoming in the, in in the becoming Bronx Puerto Rican Parade contestants for pageant. Yes. To become a member of the royal court. You could, you know, you could call me at 646-832-0642. Or go to their website. The Bronx Puerto Rican Parade website. That's amazing. Thank now, you. Now, what are some of the processes um, that comes with becoming a queen? Like, once you become crown queen, what are your responsibilities? Oh to attend every event. If you get a crown, it's for you to be there to represent. You're not gonna get a crown to put it in the, you know, in a closet and live and not do anything. You need a crown to represent and to be at all the festivities and go and, yeah, and, and show your cultura. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? Heritage pride. That's you know? right. That's what it is. And you are Puerto Rican? Yes, I am. I'm born and raised in the Bronx, but my heart belongs to Puerto Rico. Nice. You know, it's funny because, um, <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I tell people, see, I'm half Dominican, half Puerto Rican. Right. My mother was Dominican, my father was Puerto Rican. But I, when people ask me, like, oh, what part of Puerto Rico is your father from? I always say the Bronx. <laughs> and then they start <laughs> laughing, and I'm like, that's where he's that's from. <laughs> he was born in the Bronx. Yeah, you got a little little Puerto Rican <laughs> island down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but he was raised in Santulce. Oh, okay. Um, but I think my great-grandparents were from Juncas. Jun Juncos. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I represent Bayamón. Okay. And my granddaughter represents Ponce. And not only that, but Marcos Colon, my husband, he's the first prince, and he represents Guayama. Yeah. And let's let's talk about your husband now, okay. because your husband is he not only king, but he's prince. also he's a first prince. prince. First prince. But he's also an artist. Yes, he is. He's the lead singer to Los Hermanos Colon, and he's also a composer. We have to get him on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So he, how long has he been doing that, do you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> it, let me tell you something. He, first, he did rock. Wow. He was a rock singer many years ago, and then he started with the Cologne Brothers in 1992. You think he will come and do a little bit of rock over here? Oh, sure. Because I, like I like to, you know, diversify a little. I right. like to... 
a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Sure, sure, no problem. He, he plays the guitar and everything. And what know? about you? Do you no. sing? No, see, yo canto en la bañera. <laughs> she I sing in the bathtub. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> I can't sing for the love of Christ, but I could cook. I could cook. That's one thing. That's right. And not only can you cook, but you also make some very delicious... Coquito. coquito. Thank you, thank you. Yes. yes. Yes, I'm proud of my coquito. <laughs> Which we will get more, we will get into that yes. after this commercial break. <laughs> okay, thank you. And here are the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the pop category. Shea Dream with Money Time. This is Money Time. Get your money, get your money, girl. Hey, get your money, get your money, girl. Jesse Vega with He'll Never Be Me. Never be me. He'll never be me. He'll never be me. He'll never be me. Virgo G with Island Five. On the beach, it's you and me. You and me. Island hopping to the streets on a boat. The sun is blazing, I'm not about to play here We just here for the island breeze On the island, on the beach, it's you and me John KT with Better Man These were the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the pop category. Welcome back. Welcome back. If you guys are just tuning in, I'm here with Miss Coquito herself, Miss Rosa. Rosemary. Rosemary, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say your name so everybody can <laughs> Okay. Uh, my name is Rosemary Colon, Queen Rose Coquito. Yes. Queen of everything, because yeah. <laughs> not only do you do, you, we're gonna talk about the coquitos in a in a little bit, but you also do a lot of community work yes. for the elderly, which yes. I personally can um, I can appreciate because I work with the elderly, right. and I know you know how it is to see somebody their eyes light up and when they see you come in and you mm -hmm. lifting their spirits and all that. So how how's your experience with that? Well, I have a, you know, the reason I started doing the nursing homes, I had two knee replacements, and I seen, you know, some of these nursing homes, they don't have enough staff to feed the elderly, and they leave the food there. So I couldn't sit down to eat unless they ate. So once I came out of the nursing home, I, did, I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the nursing homes, and I'm going to perform for them. So I have a group called Queen uh, Alocolon Dancers, and they have the Puerto Rican outfit plena, and we go dance the plena, and which they, the girls in the royal court, they do their talent, the talent that they won. Marco sings, and they have a wonderful time. You should just see their face. The so way they real quick, for the people that don't know what plena is, can you explain that? Plena is a, uh, it's a dance that came from um, Ponce, Puerto Rico. Some of them says it came from Eloisa also, because they also have beautiful. And it's one of those plena dresses that you just like, back and forth like this, and you have your, it, it, it's just a great, great dance to do. And Very what kind simple. of music do, would you dance playing out with? To a plan out, like let's say, um, Estoy Enamorado Mi Puerto Rico, that's a beautiful song, and you, you know, you, 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 you listen to the words, and then you try to figure out how to move the skirt towards the, the, the music. To okay. the, how many, como yo digo, you know? Okay. So what about, um, like, drum? You know how, like, Spanish people... Oh, we, they used to talk the bomba. The that's a bomba. Yeah. Yes, Do you that's dance a bomba. that with that, too? No, I don't dance with the drum. We, we use the music. But uh, I have a friend, Servia Santiago. She is awesome in that, yes. That's nice. That, we got to get her on the show. Too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, now let's talk about your famous coquitos. Oh, okay. <laughs> it takes... Um, a lot of talent you got to have good measurements you don't want to put too much of this too right. little of that what i, I don't want to ask you for your recipe because i know that's top secret right <laughs> but what do you um how do you go about preparing to make these drinks and and explain to the viewers that don't know what coquito is right um okay coquito this coquito is a, it's a puerto rican um drink for the holidays 
This is what they use for the holidays, especially for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So when I make this, I don't measure because I already have the measurements in my head. And I also have my secret ingredients. But I could tell you what to use. You could use cocolope, carnation milk, coconut milk, um, condensed milk, um, um, sweet magnolia, and um, egg, I mean, nutmeg, and cinnamon. That's as far as I'm going to go because I'm not going to give you my secret ingredient. <laughs> That's as far as you go. And you could easily, you know, yourself, as much as you're going to do, if you're going to do 10 bottles, you measure what you're going to use. So, I do a lot, so I can't tell you, you know, I do a lot. So, like, let's just say um, this much liquor with this much alcohol, like for somebody who doesn't <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, like this, this much, much of liquor and then the rest go, go okay, yeah, let, let, let's have blend. A liquor. bottle like this, how much alcohol would you put in it? Well, I do a big batch, and oh. then it depends what I'm going to do. If I'm going to do, like, 20 of these, I do a big batch, and then I put the amount of liquor that I'm going to use for 20. So would you use, like, a gallon of, I of would liquor? say, like, maybe less than half a gallon. Of okay. liquor. So um, this looks like it contains a lot of milk. Is th How long is this, is the coquito, like, good, like, say you have it in your fridge, how long would it last? Well, I've had customers that they have coquitos in their fridge, like, for over six months. And wow. when they open it, it's delicious. And the reason for that is because I don't put eggs in my coquito. Oh. Yeah, you have to be very careful. I'm sure some people will say, well, I put eggs and I have it for a whole year. Good luck to you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, just the way they used to. <laughs> All right, so, but would your stomach be messing up, right? <laughs> yes, yes. With that egg. You'd be like, whoa. <laughs> I see you in the bathroom. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so what motivated you to start uh, making coquitos and selling it? Well, you know, I've always done coquito, but never sold it so maribel from the south of brand uh, south of france yes. the owner called me and said why don't you get into the coquito competition we're gonna have half one here you know tomorrow this was like three years ago and i said me and then my husband told me get in so i was the last one to register and i won the bronx wow and then from the bronx i went to the how to compete for the new york state and when i won three years ago i won a four-time winner Ah, so that whatever your secret ingredient is, it is definitely working. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, not for nothing, but a lot of people like my coquito. So for people that don't really drink, how much, how many shots of coquito will it take to get a person drunk? If they don't drink, I would say maybe like about. Well, you saw the your way Alex. Coquito. You saw the way Alex. <laughs> but not Alex. Was it Alex? Yes, Alex was already like kind of tipsy. Hold on one second, guys. I'm gonna go get the bottle real quick so you guys know yes. what we're talking about. There it goes. Wait a minute. That was Alex. He drank all that coquito. It's right there. <laughs> this was Alex. This was Alex. He drank all this coquito. He was sitting right here. And we were doing an interview, and as he's speaking, he kept on taking a shot and a shot. So he was feeling kind of so nice. So it's safe to say your coco is pretty good. Yes. I mean, this is more than a shot. That was more than a shot. <laughs> he that drank, was... he might as well have taken the whole bottle. These were the cups that he was using. He just kept on. Oh, give me one more shot. Give me one more shot. And I think, you know what it is? The sweetness. It's not, you know, you have some coquitos that are really sweet. So I try to cut down on that sweetness. You know, I'll use magnolia that is sweet, but then I'll cut it off with a non-fat, unsweet one gotcha. to balance it out. So you, okay. it doesn't be so sweet. Because um, being that it's sweet, that's why people won't... Um, I'm trying to think of the word in English, but I'm going to say it in Spanish real quick. And then I'll repeat it in English. La gente no se lleva, eh, se llevan de la, del gusto. Del gusto. And then yeah. they'll just keep drinking and, and drinking. Just keep and then before drink, the, right. you know it, they're like, Yeah, because, Ooh. you know, when you, when you buy a the sweet taste, drink. They like the taste of it. Right. And, and then they drinking. continue. And when you buy a sweet drink, you're not feeling the liquor. Right. But then you keep on, and all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, 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 oh. Well. <laughs> you know, and you don't want to get drunk. You want to to be a nice smoothie drink. It's something right. that you could, oh, let me have a coquito shot after dinner. Right. You know, something like that. Because no and to, to drink it right <laughs> away. That's, you know, that's not what it is. That's not what coquito is about. Coquito, though, is, is um, it's really a traditional drink for, like, Hispanics. Yes. Um, every year. Everywhere. 
for like Christmas time, so the holidays, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, New um, Year's. It's very yeah. popular. A lot of people may seem to make it, but I feel like this kind of drink will be good in the summertime because yes. it's sweet, it's, it's refreshing. refreshing. Yes, yes. And um, so, if anybody wants to get a hold of you and and get some coquito, how would they go about that? Well, they could go to my coquito Queen Rose coquito page on Instagram. Or you could call me at 646-832-0642. Or you could email me at queenrose.marcos, M-A-R-C-O-S, at AOL.com. Nice. Also, um, you don't just do coquito. You also cook. Am I right? I love to cook, yes. Oh. I cook penil, arroz mm. con gandules. I do coquito. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? Este? Flancocho. I do, I do a lot of stuff. Nice. So you you have a catering business. Well, from my house. From your house. <laughs> yes. I mean, I you got to start somewhere. And I have to donate I mean? food and everything. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. I am. Um, I was seeing on the news that New York City is starting to do this thing with they're having a, a pact with the restaurants, like a deal, right? Where they instead of throwing away all of that food, they could pack it up and give it to the homeless. Absolutely. Yes. And absolutely. I and I'm like, that's like that's like the most smartest thing. I, Yes. That a person could think I of. Agree. I agree. Being here in the United States, being American, there's no reason why we should be going through hunger. Exactly. All, all these no homeless ple- people out there going through hunger. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Let me tell you something. When I cook, I don't know how to cook a little bit, and it's only two people in the house. Oh my God. So if you come to visit me, you got to come empty stomach because you're not going to leave my house until you eat. And it's rude when they offer you food and you don't and you, take and it. And you don't take it. You For us no. Hispanics, that's very rude. It's that's disrespectful. Right. If we offer you a plate of food, even if you don't like it, just take it. That's and right. then take a, a bite or two and or move the spoon around, make it look like you ate Una it. Una guaje. <laughs> you know, and then we'll feel okay. <laughs> then we'll be feeling fine. That's right. Absolutely. So what is your main goal with your business, with the coquito? Well, now I have... Um, Hopefully, and I'm praying to God by next year, um, it's going to be more out there. I have a, a marketing manager now who happens to be the fiancé to my granddaughter. Congratulations, Crystal. Congratulations. Thank you. And she is um, the the president of the company, and Marcos is the, uh, the vice uh, CEO, and I'm the CEO, and we're going to start marketing because he's got a, a master's in business, so he's going to take over. Think oh I, look how beautiful is that, that is beautiful right there. Yeah. Look at all that. That's when yeah, those are my three trophies there. My first, second, and third trophy. From the Queen. From the Coquito. Wow. Oh, from the Coquito. Yeah, oh from the Queen. Girl, we can't even get started. <laughs> I have so many trophies from when I was Queen. Next time you come, I want you to come with your sash and your crown. Oh, absolutely. I'll bring that, the royal right? court. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I will bring bring the royal court with me. Yes. Uh you also dance. I love to dance salsa. Because I know before the commercial break you were saying, I don't sing, but you didn't mention that you could dance. Yes, I could dance. Yes, I do. Salsa is your number one thing? Number one. That's number awesome. one. But I know how to dance everything. You know, we grew up listening to Mexican songs. I love Mexican songs. I love La Cumbia. I was going to say, let me, let me put some names. Alejandro Fernandez. Yes. Because, uh, see, I'm Pedro Fernandez, Pedro Fernandez yes, the father, yes. Vicente, <laughs> Vicente Fernandez, y te recuerda Tony Aguilar, oh my God, and I'm going way back, yep. I'm going way back, yes, yes. Yeah. The mariachi is the best, it's, 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 how can I say, it's the type of music that you really show, if you a real singer, if you could sing mariachi, mariachi you're you an authentic, mm-hmm. real singer, because yes. The lo- they have some lungs on them, mm-hmm. you know. It's yeah, a beautiful absolutely. thing. But I'm sorry, go ahead. You were talking. No, about, you started listening to um. You listen to a lot of Mexican music. Yeah, a lot of Mexican music, and you know, el mucho bolero, los trios. Oh yes, los trios. I love. The and trios. I only know these things because, like, I'm, I, I'm an old soul. Mm-hmm. Like I take care of older elderly people for a living, and so I'm around them all the time. So I gravitate to pick up little stuff and. Right. You know what I mean? My favorite, though, um, from Salsa, my favorite singer is Frankie Ruiz. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I love Rey Ruiz, too. Rey Ruiz, Eri Santiago. Yeah, I love all those old school singers. My own Peñas, yes, my Jose Rivera. Yeah. I mean, Jerry Rivera. Yes, I love them all. I love them all. You know what? Um, the day of my birthday, I was surprised. Um, my 60th birthday, I celebrated on March 9th. 
and I got a proclamation yeah. from the assemblyman of Jose Rivera. That's awesome. I was like, what? How did this happen? Congratulations. And that was my husband. He sent in my bio together with Margie Espinosa, who I consider my sister. And I, mean, I was crying. <laughs> I was, That's I was amazing. How, how was that experience for you? It was like... I said, wow, you know, I don't do for the community to get back. Whenever I do something, like, you know, my husband just sold his house, and before that, I used to have all my events in my house. I didn't ask for donation. I didn't ask for nothing. Everything came out of my pocket because I don't care. Because you know who's paying me back? God is paying me back. Thank you. That's, I was having that conversation with somebody earlier today Thank you. about how you know, a lot of people, they do things to get something out of it. They... Yeah. They charge, you know, and I understand some some things they, you know, some places they need to charge in order to pay their their bills or the whatever. Bills, correct. But I feel like when you're doing something for the community, whether it be putting out music or helping the elders or even feeding somebody, you know, like you do it from your heart. Like, the, oh my God, I was craving this caramel iced coffee so bad, and then when I got it and I took two sips, I was like. Oh, I don't, this is too <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. And I see, a, I see, I'm walking, I see an elderly man, and I could tell, like, he's homeless, you mm -hmm. know, and he's telling me, he, he said something to me, like, oh, hi, hi, beautiful, or something. And I said, hi, sir, how are you? And I'm like, would you like some coffee? It's iced coffee. He was like, sure. I took the straw, like, I'll take the straw off for you, you know what I mean? Right. And then I'm thinking, like, I do that not because I didn't want the coffee. Yeah, I didn't want the coffee, but also it's hot. It was Monday. It was hot. Yeah. Who knows this guy? He looked like he could be, be thirsty. Exactly. And maybe yeah. he didn't have no money. And mm -hmm. I've been in a situation where I didn't have anything. Yeah. And I never, I was too proud to, We've all been to like, ask for anybody. But God will send somebody mm -hmm. to, to help you out when That's you least right. expect it. And I look That's at right. us like, like we're like little, little um, soldiers of God. We go out there. We help. I feel like if you help the elderly, like you're an angel. That's because... Right. Those are the main ones that I, what's the elderly and the kids, those are my main, main one. You know, and like I said, I don't, I don't get rich if I'm losing a dollar or two dollars. I'm not here. Because let me tell you something, you could save your money. When you die, is the money going to go with you? Because they're not, not going to bury you with the money. The next person will be like, okay, mañana I'm going shopping. Yep. Yes. Yep. And Oh my God, that dress is so beautiful! Thank you. You yeah. definitely have to come over here again and and do your dance and sure you know, talk a little bit more about that. So Bayamón, huh? Bayamón representing Bayamón. <laughs> yes. Representing Bayamón, yes. and um, again for the viewers who are just tuning in, who would like to either purchase some coquito. You said you, you cater as well. Yes. Maybe they want to cater some food from you, sure. or they want to know how to get into the royal. Court. Court. Mm -hmm. How, um, can you let them know again sure. how they can go about it? Okay, if you want to uh, be a contestant at, for the Bronx Puerto Rican Parade, you could go to the Bronx Puerto Rican Parade website, or you could call me, Queen Rose, 646-832-0642. And also for the Coquito, you could reach me at the same number, or if you'd like me to cater any party that you have, also call me at the same number, or you could reach me at Queen Rose Coquito Instagram, or my email is queenrose.marcos, M-A-R-C-O-S, at AOL.com. And I would also like to add that you will be a vendor for the 2019 yes. LDM Independent Music Awards show yes. that we have. I'm looking forward to tasting your food, <laughs> drinking some of your coquitos, yes, yes, and yes. just, you know, just having your energy there because you are, you're – you have a very beautiful energy. Thank you. Thank and you. may I also say you do not look like you're six <laughs> at thank all. You. I was actually admiring your hair. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I was going to ask this you, did, is, is that natural? Or this did is you natural. That, that's awesome. Like, this is natural. It looks like you dyed it. No, like no. It's, this it's is, nice. This is the color. <laughs> I said the, the dye, God gave me the dye. That's <laughs> this right. This is natural. <laughs> and your face is so young and everything. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. you, you. Know? Thank you. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on thank the show. You, thank you, I know that you were on the previous show before this. Yes. You're tired you got a long trip ahead of um, you going to florida going on vacation <laughs> mm -hmm. take get some sun and some sand yes from yes here, right? thank you thank you again so much for coming on the show you, you guys know miss rosa coquito, Queen rose coquito. <laughs>
Thank and you, you so much. And you guys have any more questions or information, just go to the LDMnetwork.net, and all the information will be there. We'll be back after this commercial break. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Are the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the RNB category? Voice with All I Ask. All I ask is, will you marry me? Down on one knee, will you? Mark Hightower with Stuck on You. I'm just stuck on you. Natalie Jean, with All I Want. Timothy Bonnet, with Lie to Me. How you gonna lie like that? Don't lie like that to me. To me. I'd rather you lie to me. I'd rather you lie. These were the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the RNB category. God bless my haters, God bless fake hoes, God bless these haters, cause God don't need no bad. All I do is get it, all I, all I do is get it, all I do is get it, all I, all I do is get it, all I do is get it, all I, all I do is get it, all I do is get it, all I, all I do is get it. So God bless snake niggas, God bless snake hoes, God bless your fake players, cause God don't need no bad. All I do is get it, all I do is make it mine All I do is get it, track it, get it poppin' every time nigga. All I do is get it, all I do is live it All I do is spend it for the days that daddy's in it So God bless these haters, God bless these hoes God bless these fake friends that turn out to be foes Telling me God is my maker and God bless this paper So God bless me, I chase you until I meet my maker Thank you. 
2019 LDM Independent Music Nominees in the Pop Category Shade Dream with Money Time. Jesse Vega with He'll Never Be Me. Never Be Me. He'll Never Be Me. Virgo G with Island Five. On the beach, it's you and me. You and me. Island hopping, sipping drinks on the dark beach. The sun is blazing, I'm not about playing. We just here for the island breeze. Yeah. On the island, on the beach, it's you and me. John K T with Better Man. These were the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the pop category. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm here with Ms. Eve Soto, vocal coach, singer, entrepreneur, a little bit of everything. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to be here. How are you doing, daughter? I'm good. I haven't seen you in a couple of months. For those of you guys that don't know, Miss Eve is also my vocal that's right. Coach, and I'm still, I still, I'm still, I still need a little bit of work, but I'm getting there. <laughs> One day I'm just going to grab you by your neck and just hold on to you for right. a few weeks. <laughs> so how, how are you? How's everything going with you? I'm doing great. Everything is going well. It's, uh, this year is going by quickly. It really is. Yeah, but we, we've got a lot of stuff going. I'm working on some new um, uh, classes and some actually some new downloads and some new videos for all of you who like to sing and yes. you know get your vocal exercise on. <laughs> so um, for those of you guys who don't know, she, she owns Ready to Sing Studio mm -hmm. and it's located in Mount Vernon, New York. Um, I've personally been there. It's a beautiful studio. She takes her time. She's a great instructor. She's patient and she's very well worth it. So to get that out the way, okay. Um, the, what projects have you been working on lately? Lately, well, we we've redone the website, like I said, to get some new um, online classes because that seems to be the you know very popular right now. Right. People who want to train and uh, do artist development online, uh, you log into readytosing.net and you can kind of you can sign up for an online class where you can learn some of the more um, contemporary uh, vocal techniques. You know, mo I'm I'm also an engineer, so a lot of my training or a lot of my vocal techniques come from being an engineer and working with record labels and, and people from American Idol and The Voice, more contemporary type vocal techniques for R&B, right. gospel, and pop artists. Can you yeah. drop some names of some of the artists that you've worked with? Oh, well, I, I'll tell you that Heavy D got me started in the business. I okay, love Heavy artist. D. Yeah, God bless him. Heavy uh -huh. D, Puffy, Mount Vernon. Hey. Yeah, represent, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so they had, they had a, a, a big influence in, in my start. Um, Heavy D, Puffy, uh, I worked for Mariah Carey's label for a while. I've done a lot wow. of stuff with record labels, back when record labels existed. Right. But that's where a lot of my training and engineering experience came from. And I would say in the more recent years, I did work with um, some American Idol finalists, uh, like Travis Orlando, um, Damo from the Bronx. She's Latino. That's my you also worked with a big pun son. 
No? Oh, yes, recently. Yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. And oh I remember God. I did a session with you when he was like, he had just Chris. left or something. Yeah. Chris Rivers. I yes, Chris him. Rivers. Chris yeah. Rivers. Yeah, he's doing yeah. his thing. His manager actually um, uh, contacted me recently about some other projects they're working on. Um, but yeah, American Idol and The Voice finalists have helped uh, some people get you know on these shows and you know, school scholarships and stuff like that. But it doesn't, you know, it's not just limited to that. You know, I work with choirs. I work with children. You work with children. I yeah. see that all the time. What is the most difficult thing working with somebody who, like me, who didn't have, doesn't, never had no experience with singing, never had no practices? Mm -hmm. What's, like, the most difficult thing for you as an instructor to teach? This. Right there. What's in your head? To memorize? No, to dealing with the individual and what their mental blocks are, uh, what their own personal mental blocks are. That's been the biggest challenge. Because Not the technique. The technique is right. easy. If, if, you, if, you, if you want it and you practice it, most, most people can get you know, a little bit further than they, they thought they could. But I think my biggest challenge is dealing with people's personal um, the you confidence, know, maybe? Their, the confidence, the whatever their blocks are, whatever their, uh, their issues or their reasons or their, the reason for their um, the, the confidence, whatever it is we have to do to kind of break through it, that's been the biggest challenge. And everybody's so, different. Right. So, yeah. like, for me, I felt like the most challenging part was hearing myself because I'm, yes. like, tone deaf. I feel like I'm tone deaf. I can't hear myself you, when I hit that whatever you, notes you want me to hit. I can't. When you're playing the, the piano and you're, like... You but know? when you're on, you're on it. But I feel like you're, I can't hear myself. No, no, no. It's, it's about getting used to it. You have to really give yourself a chance to get used to it. You know, a lot of times we learn things, you know, not related to singing. Sometimes somebody can teach us how to make something, and boom, we can make it. Mm -hmm. You know, with singing, it's about repetition. And a lot of times we don't have the patience. Sometimes we don't have the patience for that. You know, we want to, yeah. all right, show me how to do it. And then I show you how to do it. And then sometimes we don't have the internal patience right. to really kind of, you know, give ourselves the opportunity to, re to do it again and again. And if we feel like we have to do it again and again, we feel like something's wrong with us. Right. And that's, that's not the case. Because I'm, I'm totally guilty of mm -hmm. um, starting to sing something. And then if I hear myself off note, then it's like, that's it. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, it's, this is not for me, I guess. I guess I, it's just not for me. You did so. some really good stuff, though, recently. I heard one of the, the last records that I heard you do was really good. It um, was on. I, I actually just recorded a um, Spanglish song. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it, I sounded pretty good. For some reason, when I sing in Spanish, I'm on, I'm on, like, I don't know. I can hear myself singing at the note. But okay. in English... It's like I can't hear the no. Why is that? Is well, I'd have to dig and ask you some questions. So, like I'd have to ask you, like, oh, it's my fault. <laughs> no, well, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I'd have to ask you some questions. Like, growing up, did you did you hear more Spanish music? And did you sing yeah, more? I did. Was it in how? Okay, so that's what you heard yourself singing more. It go it, here. We, here we go back to what we're used to hearing ourselves do. Okay, so True. singing is not new to you, but singing in English is new to you. And the thing about the music industry is that we're always trying to kind of stay on top of the trend. Mm -hmm. And it may not be what we're used to doing. It's always going to be a new trend. So, you know, that's the new trend versus what you grew up listening to is what your challenge is. True, but mm -hmm. I spoke English my whole life. Did you, but you said you sang. Spanish. You heard the yeah, music. Yeah, I did hear the music. The I music did hear that a lot you were hearing Spanish in the music. house, the music that you grew up around, the music that you were singing or mumbling to or humming was probably in Spanish. You know what happened to me? Uh, I started going to church. Mm -hmm. My pastor's wife, um, she she was uh, the late Timothy Wright, the pastor Timothy Wright's um, background singer. Oh, wow. And then she also played the organs for him. And I started going to this church, and she just, like, pulled me to the front of the choir, and I never sang a day in my life, and I'm, like, lip-singing, like, I don't know the words to this song, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but she's really, spot. yeah, she put me on the spot, and then and then it was, like, everybody's looking at me, like, but this girl can't really even sing like that. But she saw something in me, okay. I guess, because she just, and I'm just here, there, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I she's, like, I'm going to teach you. That <laughs> happens a lot in church where people kind of get put on the spot, you know. Yeah, they just assume, oh, she looks like she could sing. But well, they may have heard you do something. It could have been a note or it could have been the tone of your voice. You have a very nice vocal tone. 
Your tone is beautiful. Thank so you. sometimes when people hear the tone, they don't know what your challenges are. They right. just hear the tone and like, oh, her voice is nice. Get yeah. up here. You know, you also have to remember that sometimes we are dealing with other people's percep per perceptions of, of singing. They hear right. your voice and Amazing. it sounds nice. She has a nice voice. Her voice is very nice. I like, have, so listen, if this it. doesn't work out for me, I may still have a future with the 1 800. 1 800, <laughs> call me if you want to talk to someone. <laughs> you better start singing. I know. You better start, you better start playing. <laughs> Come on now. You, you did put a lot of time into it. It's just understanding, you know, what you're, you're understanding what your challenges are. Yeah. And, and I and think um, practicing, practice makes, I haven't been practicing, and I can tell. And you have to know what to practice. Because right. sometimes, you know, singers practice incorrectly. If they don't have any kind of guidance or if there wasn't any kind of vocal instruction or help, sometimes people could be reinforcing bad habits. Right. And that's why, that's the whole purpose of a coach. Any coach, basketball coach, football coach, life coach, you know, singing coach. So we don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Or so we're not Definitely. doing the, we're not going down the, you know, the path that we know it's not you know, going to be productive for mm -hmm. us or we're not going to see progress. Or it's about getting, you know, reaching those goals in a, in a short amount of time. So, yeah, staying under some sort of vocal instruction or guidance will definitely help you with your singing. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been teaching, uh, being a, a vocal coach? How long have you Ooh. been doing I have been teaching for about 22 years. Huh? 22 years, yeah. Nuh -uh. Yeah. How? Yep, yep, yep. And it's funny because I was just telling somebody the other day that when I first started teaching, I used to lie about my age. I used to make myself older. Really? Yes. When I first started teaching voice, I used to make myself older for credibility. For credibility. So for, people could be like, oh, so she has a lot you of years. Know, she, you know, she, you know, I was like 23, and I would tell people I was 27. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I'd be like, okay, she's a grown up. Yeah, she I, can teach. And, and I have to say this <laughs> right before we go to commercial break because I'm looking at you and I'm looking at you and I'm does she not look like Gina? Martin! Martin. <laughs> you look just like Gina. <laughs> I've been hearing that. That's okay. You hear that a lot, right? I've been hearing that since we were since she was like 13. I mean, you can't some call awkward, nobody. <laughs> Oh, my God. But, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. After this commercial break, we'll be back with more with Miss Eve Soto when we come back. 2019 Music Music Little little juices of crunch time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm about to spit this in it, it's a little bit of 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 Richard Picasso with no free to the Hire the RC with a good chick. The loss that you see in me. You're a good chick, a thick chick, a freak like me. Bobby scale, no doubt. I don't never gotta check my bank account. All I need is a woman is down for the and these were the 2019 LDM Independent Music nominees in the hip hop category. 2019 LDM Independent Music Award Country Music nominees. Sister Sister with Another Fast Love. Glenda Peters, Let Me Be Home. My dreams of has got me down. The search is over, an empty ground. But there is one. Marie, Pice or No, with Discount Tobacco oh, and Beer. Discount Tobacco and Beer. Discount Tobacco and Beer. Catherine Shipley with God Gave Me All I Need. So if you pass me on the street, don't 
Welcome back, welcome back. I am your karma, and I'm also Carmen Serrano. <laughs> and I'm here with Miss Eve Soto, vocal trainer um, for the stars. Eve, you've worked with a lot of people. What makes you different than, than an, any other vocal coach that's out there? What makes me different is I am able to kind of focus on what the singer's needs are and really address them um, as far as comparing maybe to other coaches, I, I'm not the, I'm classically trained, but my focus is on R&B, pop, gospel, and I do what's called artist development, really training, giving artists what they need um, to become an artist today. Everything from improvisation to, of course, the vocal techniques, the performance, giving them opportunities to actually get out there and perform in venues, really providing uh, venues for them and opportunities and, um, you know, like I said, the techniques that, you know, singers who are doing today's music right. need. Okay. So what do you see, um, like, what is the difference between singers from back in the days and, like, singers, I mean, I, we can clearly hear the difference, but what do you think, um, because I feel like every generation, the music changes. Right. So maybe, like, something that sounds like trash for us. Yes. For the new generation, it sounds hot because that's what they're into. And our music probably sounded like trash for, for our parents yeah, because parents, yes. it wasn't what they was It was listening. about Marvin Gaye. And, right. Well, right. Right. even Marvin Gaye still sound, sounds yeah, good. His music is good. But as, as a coach, you know, and, and remember, I spent a lot of time in the, in the music industry, so sometimes um, there, there can be a, a dilemma. You know, because I'm not just a vocal coach. I do, did, like I said, I spent time in the music industry, um, you know, as a producer, as a manager. So sometimes there could be a, a, a clash. And what I mean by that is for today's artists, I encourage the artists, mm -hmm. not the singers. There's a difference between the singers and artists. I encourage the artists to be true to the trend. You know, whether or not you go with, whether you go with the trend or you go with something else, you still have to pay attention to it. You have to be aware of what is selling. You know, do you want to be a singer or do you want to sell records? Right. You have to really um, differentiate between the two and know the difference between, all right, I want to be the best singer or no, I want to come up with something and I want to sell records. You have to stay um, up, up, updated on, on the, the musical trends um, and what is selling in, in the music in the music industry, in the music world, okay, whether you're performing or trying to sell records. Like, right now it's not even about who sings the best. It's about pockets and rhythms. Right. You know, the little, you know, I can break it down for you. You know, to the, you can find me at ready to sing that. That's net. right. <laughs> but, yeah, it's really, about, it's really about paying attention and breaking down the, the trends. So mm -hmm. for an uh, independent artist, a new mm -hmm. artist that's coming out there, um, yes. what... Like, what would you encourage them to, like, what is the most difficult part about breaking into the music industry? The, the most difficult part about breaking into the music industry is the individuals being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The vulnerability of it is that individual, uh, I struggle with my, my artists with this, you know, people that I work with that want to be an artist. It's, the, it's them committing to just starting a YouTube page. Starting a Facebook musician page, mm -hmm. starting a Instagram business page, that is so frightening. And a lot of you artists don't want to admit it, but it is very, it could be very frightening because you feel like you're, be, you're putting yourself out there now. As a musician, you're putting yourself out there to be critiqued or to be broken down or to be judged. Right. And that can be very frightening. That is the hardest thing. You know, I, people, I, I know people who will train and train and train. But I say, all right, now it's time for you to start your YouTube page and we're going to put up some videos. They're like, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh but that's like people that, like, I'm going to I'm gonna shout her out. Like my sister, right, my older sister, she was all she for, she was all for the, my, my new podcast, right? She yes. was giving me ideas and writing questions down and everything. And then when I'm like, okay, so you're going to come on the show and do the podcast mm -hmm. with me? Uh, uh. Uh, and then I'm like, you scared? <laughs> like, you just scared of what being on TV? Like being out there? What are you scared of? The camera's not gonna talk back to you. Committing. Not, the camera's not gonna boo committing. you. <laughs> you know the what I'm saying? Committing to the idea of being out there right. 
and 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 saying anything and being judged or being right. broken down and people feel like their confidence will be absolutely you know so that's the hardest thing it's not even the it's not even the talent you asked me what the challenge is the biggest right. challenge for the artist is to put themselves out there as an artist because everybody feels like oh i'm not ready yet I want to finish my album. I want to finish my this. I want to get this right. I'm like, no, no, no. You have to put yourself out there right now. Let people see your growth. Right. Let them see it. Because when they buy your records or when they buy tickets to see your show, they're not buying your records. Right. They're buying you. They're Absolutely. buying you. So let them see you in the development stages of your project. That's what makes you more endearing, and that's what makes you more competitive to, to everybody else. And they'll stay with you. Those are your fans. When you come out and you sound okay on your first record and you do a little bit more, you do better, you do a cover. If you go online right now, you can find videos of Jesse J before she got signed. You can find videos of uh, Justin Bieber as a little kid singing before he, long before he got an opportunity, Ariana Grande, and people have the opportunity to grow with them. Right. Let people grow with you. Don't feel like you have to be perfect and ready to put yourself out there as an artist. Don't do that. Great answer. That's an awesome answer. Where would an uh, independent artist that is just coming out with new music, where, where would they, where's the best place for them to put their music out there? Dep it, Besides the LDM radio, of radio, course. Besides God. the LDM radio, you know there, there there's there's a you know there are many different answers to that question, but the first Maybe, thing like I want to get signed, I want to get noticed. Where should I put my music so that somebody who's up there uh -huh. is guaranteed to, to see it? Okay, well the first thing, I'm so gonna, much competition. I'm, yeah, there's a lot of competition. I'm going to address what you're saying. 10, 15, 20, 15 years ago, it was about putting your music out there so you know the people up there could see it and you can get a situation and you could get elevated you're signing yourself mm -hmm. there are no record deals I, well i shouldn't say Nowadays, that really. your first record deal i should say okay. is you signing yourself commit to doing your project yourself you do your video you do your music you find your production you, you do the writing you be your stylist you are your first record deal and you're as far as putting yourself out there so that you know the right people can see you, the right people are your fans. Right. The right people are the people who are going to listen to your music. Not some executive, mm -hmm. not some A and R. You know, maybe later, okay. But the first record deal is you signing yourself and committing to doing certain things on your own awesome. and the people that the, the person that you want to reach is not some executive don't aim for the executives don't aim for the label aim for the aim to get new fans aim to get people to enjoy what you're doing just as much as you enjoy it and that's when you'll see the success and that's when the other situations will find you really really good answer how does uh artists deal with um the negative aspect of it, you know, there's people that they they won't share their music. There's mm -hmm. people who won't show them love. There's people who they just feel like I'm putting all this energy out there and I'm not receiving it back. What advice would you give to somebody, an artist that's going through that right now? Put your big drawers on. Put your big underwears on. <laughs> and and kind of, you know, get past it. I, I, not not to brush off the the answer, but anything you do, if you get a job, you know, in, a, in the corporate world, you're going to have to deal with the same components. You have to deal with the same thing where people are going to hate on you. You know, don't be hurt. You know, again, that's people are already aware of that. That's why they're they have that vulnerability. They're afraid to put themselves out there because they're afraid of people, hurt, you know, hurting rejection. their feelings or rejection. Right. Right. You know, you're 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 in a game that is for the masses. You're in a game that is for the masses. So for every you know five people that reject your music or you know say something about you there's you know 50 that like it so it's up to you to get past those five and find those 50. absolutely okay it's hard it can be you know sometimes people can say some things and be just really set you back but just i feel like there's people out there that their their life's mission 
is to go on the internet <laughs> and course. just troll whoever they see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember somebody went on my on my Instagram Uh-oh. page and they were like, "You can't sing," and I'm like. Okay, but you're still listening to my my music though, right? Oh, you must have heard it. So how, how do you know? You know how you know how you know you I must can't have heard it. So. Cause you listening. That's right. Yeah, that's your karma. That's right. Um, I I always look at it like this. You know, I always tell people live your dream. It's okay to dream, but live your dream because at the end of the day, it's something nobody can take away from you. And have fun with it. You know, Absolutely. whatever you're doing, have fun with it. And you know, if you if you're ridiculous, be very ridiculous. If you're silly, be very silly. If you if you're in love with your music, be very in love. I with it. I think that's what people like. People yeah. are looking for like personality. I guess like mm-hmm. you know Cardi B. I'm gonna give an example. She's crazy. Yes. She's out there. She's she out doesn't there. care. Nope. But not everybody's like her. So I feel like what about the people that are like more tamed? Like yeah, do they? Like why why, why do you? Why do I gotta feel like I gotta act all? crazy to get attention if, if that's not my personality you know what i'm saying and, and you know the thing about being an artist sometimes everybody's not gonna like you everybody's not gonna love you but you know if you really put yourself out there and go all out they can they gotta at least respect you right they gotta at least respect you because there are artists out there that you and i do not really get into their music but we admire them mm-hmm. we admire them i love cardi b I love Cardi B for that reason. I may not sit down and listen to her album right. all day, but I love her for her approach right. to her career. She's like, well, what, what? Right. You know, Absolutely. She's like, I don't care. You know, she does have a very I don't care attitude. Mm-hmm. So that she demands respect in what she's doing. You know? Like, I, I like Cardi B too, but I, I think that I, I'm a better rapper than her. I think I'm a better lyricist uh, oh, than her. Oh, most definitely. Um, you better get on it, you though. Heard, you heard well, you gotta have the, You gotta have the comp, <laughs> you gotta project that same. Right. Confidence but then I feel life. also like at, like is there like an age limit where you just sh- should just hang up the gloves and just let the younger <laughs> generation cause she's a part of the younger generation is she? so it's yeah so it's like it's to me, I don't feel like it's a competition because she's from this generation right. she's acting the way that kids that, this generation act yeah. and I'm not from this and generation. we don't know how old she is. She's like 25 or something yeah, like okay. that. 26, we don't, we don't 25, know. 26. She's young. And some you know? people don't even care. It's just about what, she, what she's able to sell. So as far as hanging up the glove, as far as being an artist, or to, or, you know, yeah, of course we went through that. And some of us still go through that because it's left over mm-hmm. from the, the record label. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what the, 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 the stigma that the record labels had where you had to be 15, 16 to get a record deal. Absolutely. But if you really look at what's going on right now, you know, there are artists at different ages who are starting earlier mm-hmm. and there's, there's some are starting later. But what I will say, it you have to make sure that what you're selling is believable. You know, of course, Absolutely. I'm not, if I were to put out a song right now, I'm not trying to sing or sell what I might have put out 10, right. 15 years ago. You know, you do outgrow, your, you change. So make sure that your music goes with um, you and, 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 and uh, the lyrics, the content, uh, and make sure that the people who are in your age range would, would enjoy it, you know. Absolutely. Miss Eve Soto, thank you so much for coming on the House of Karma. Please let the viewers know where they can find you. Find me at readytosing.net. Yes. Or I'm on YouTube. If you want to get a start on some really cool, fun vocal exercises, you'll enjoy practicing with me. Um, you can just, like I said, go on YouTube and put in Eve Soto, E-V-E-S-O-T-O. Yeah, that's me right there. They got it. That's it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the House of Karma. Please stay tuned. After this, we have Petty Talk Podcast coming right up. I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. LDMnetwork.net, House of Karma. Mm -hmm. You already know. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's me.